The International Monetary Fund, the IMF. Do they save economies or enslaving countries? Or let's ask another way. Are the IMF loans a kind of bailout or a device of enslavement? You know the answer, and uh, let's take a closer look and evaluate it. In this video, we will talk about whether the IMF lending improves an economy or makes it worse. Now, if you have any, slowly put aside all your prejudices and misinformation and discover the truth with me. A group of economists said that Turkey's increasing dollar need, especially after the currency attack, could only be treated with a loan from the IMF. And they even said, no one can pay land that amount of dollar debt but the IMF. Now, let's see if that's really the case. For the beginning, what is the IMF and what is it for? Let's answer these questions first. Looking at the general definition, the IMF is an international organization established to meet the dollar needs of its member countries. Don't be fooled that it is called an international organization. Whoever pays the most is the boss. In fact, since the raw material is in dollars and only the Federal Reserve can print the dollar, the boss is the US. You can see it when you visit the website. The most of the shares belongs to the USA. Let's come to the main function. What was it? Providing liquidity in emergencies. Dollar liquidity. Well, you are a member country and you also need dollars. You said to the IMF, give me dollars. Calm down, boy. It is not that easy. The institution says that they will offer you some conditions and you will accept all these terms that may gonna offer. In order to soften these conditions perceptually, you will implement it in your country under the names of structural reform. Now, why is the institution imposing these conditions on you? The answer is actually very simple. To be able to collect the dollars they give you. So they want to get sure that you pay the debt. So far, everything seems normal, right? Listen, the conditions are so severe that you have no choice but to apply these conditions. Whatever it takes, so harsh conditions, no different from a slave contract. I am serious. Check out the website yourself. Increasing taxes, raising the retirement age, reducing social expenditures such as health, education, etc. As you can see, the IMF imposes all conditions on you that will make the life of a citizen nightmare. When you look at the conditions, it's like that. Take the keys and I let you to own the country. Exactly, I'm not kidding. When you ask the IMF these conditions, they will respond to you, these are to solve the structural problems of your economy. But the results tell us a different story, buddy. There is no positive case that any country that has borrowed from the IMF has recovered so far. Can anyone show any example? No, because there is not. Anyway, if a country finds a loan from anywhere else, the last chance is the IMF, the last gate. Aside from saving your economy by borrowing from this institution, it's a really mess. Aside from saving your economy by borrowing from this institution, it is a really mess, both politically and sociologically. Think of it like falling into the hands of a user. Do you know anyone who get better with a borrowing from a user? Look, ask anybody around yourself. No one will tell you a good ending story. Pakistan, Argentina, Greece and many others are IMF regulars who couldn't recover with the debt they borrowed from the IMF. Let alone saving their economies, they have all become debt addicts. And this addiction brings with it many structural crises. Structural reforms bring structural crises. Wow, it sounds great, like a quote. So, if these countries are unable to pay this debt, why does the IMF continue to lend to them? Or let's ask another way. Why does the IMF lend to these countries that no one willing to lend or trust enough to lend. During the Cold War, when Haiti was a strategic ally of the United States, from 1960 until 1990, 30 years, 
Haiti was receiving loans from the IMF during 27 of those years. In fact, John Adams gives us the answer for this question. The second president of the US. He said the following historical quote in 1826. Or shall we say he determined the strategy to be implemented for centuries. You decide it. It's up to your decision. There are two ways to conquer nations. The first one is the sword. The second is the debt. Then you've got Pakistan. And I mean, there is a very strategically important country, right? So you think back to December 2001, when the United States was looking for a foothold from which to enter into Afghanistan. Pakistan gets a, a huge loan from the IMF, double the size of the previous loan that they had received. Lending to a country where no one willing to lend. Very interesting, huh? I think it means that it's an organization that has purposes beyond just collecting the money it lends. Because there are such countries that the IMF delays the debts of these countries every three or four years. They have no industrial production, no job creation. I don't even mention on education and technology. Why do you lend money to this country? Because it is obvious that country cannot pay the debt. And the results, well, we see the level of development in Haiti and Pakistan after 30, 40, 50 years of engagement with the IMF. Thanks to God, Turkey put an end to this story in 2013, stopped borrowing from the IMF in 2005, from which the country had been borrowing since 1960. We, I mean Turkey, borrowed since 45 years continuously. This story of borrowing started right after the execution of Menderes, the former Prime Minister of Turkey. The first lending started with the Putschists, then Ismet Inunu, after whom the Putschists handed over the government, later Bülent Ecevit, Süleyman Demirel, Tansu Çiller. By the way, those names were the former Prime Ministers of Turkey. Ha! Huh, another Putschist can I run too. Whoever comes to mind has gone and borrowed money from the IMF in Turkey's history. And finally, Turkey finished 45 years of debt addiction by paying the last installment in 2013. That's why you need to think twice before saying the IMF. When you want to save your country's economy through the IMF, there is a high risk of turning into a slave, a debt addicted slave. What we are talking about is not a secret, it's a known fact. You pay off the debt somehow. But what about structural reforms which deteriorates your country's original settings? Is it possible to get it back to normal? I mean, without lending the IMF loan again. So, you see, the loan received from the IMF is nothing more than the infrastructure for the next higher debts.